heat to gross. We are live. Hey friends, welcome to today's show at the Gardener's Workshop and I want to welcome each and every one of my flower friends. It's our Easter show if you couldn't tell from my um, cute little pith helmet here that Susie has added some embellishments to. And today's show, I am spilling the beans all about zinnias. I'm gonna be demonstrating the small and the large blocker. I'm gonna be sowing zinnia seeds into the small block and gourd seeds for our spinning gourd into the large block. And I'm gonna be showcasing um, our favorite zinnias and zinnia mixes, zinnia seed mixes. I am giving away another prize again today, y'all, which you know I love to do that so very much. And remember, at the end of the show, I do a short live Q&A. And um, if you have a question you'd like to be entered to have that answered, just put the at and Lisa, and the girls will gather those all up, and then they select a couple of them. So before we get started, I'm taking this off because I feel like it's um, making my eyeballs dark. Couldn't see very well. Um, so... Before we jump into our wonderful show today, friends, be sure to hit the share button to let your friends know that you're here and that we're live and invite them to come over. We love it when that happens. And I have some really great announcements to make today. First off, our good friend Ellen's Frost's course is on sale just for this weekend. It's Florist School Online, Growing Your Business with Local Flower Sourcing. If you don't know what that is, Ellen is the florist in Baltimore, Maryland that only uses flowers grown within 100 miles of her design studio year-round, y'all. She's been doing this for like a decade and a half. And this course is packed full of good information. So who should take the course? Florist and designers, whether you're established or budding, if you want to get another marketing avenue um, or get started going in the right direction using local, this is the course for you, farmer florist. Anyone interested in using local flowers and flower farmers, if you're seeking knowledge of the floral industry, I don't know about you, but I feel more confident when I kind of know what my florists are all about, you know, it's for you. So it's on sale for $100 off through Monday, April 1st. Um, and there's a coupon code is how you get that $100 off and the coupon um, code is local, L-O-C-A-L, and you just put that in the promotion box at checkout, and the course is $495. You get $100 off for $395, and friends, and of course, it's the normal. You get lifetime unlimited access, all of that stuff um, in there, and um, so check that out. We have also announced our um, open farm and warehouse date for this year, so you can save the date. It's June 24th here in Newport News for 2020, huh? Oh, what did I say? Sorry. Hmm. June 29th, y'all. Scratch, scratch 24th. I think it was 24th last year. Sorry, I can't believe I even thought about that. June 29th of 2024 is our open farm and warehouse. Um, it's Normally, those are private. This is the one time a year we open it up, um, and it's free, in-person event, no pets allowed, um, and I'm being joined again this year by Dave Dowling and Ellen Frost, um, and so it's going to be a fun-packed day. We have garden tours, warehouse shopping. The warehouse is like four miles away from the farm. It's going to be tons of fun. People come from all over the country. It's totally it's the funnest thing I do all year, just about. And so more information will be coming. Make sure you're on our email list. So a little bit of housekeeping. Be sure if you are shopping here in the app and you have an account, be sure that your email and phone number is correct. We have a lot of typos that happen occasionally. And if we have a shipping issue or something or a question about your shipping address, we can't get a hold of you. So check that out. And so shipping for here in the app, Seed only orders, you know, ship for free, only in the app here if you order just seeds. Product shipping is capped at $9.95. That means that no matter how many products you purchase or occasionally we feature special products over here that have additional shipping on our website, here you only pay $9.95 for these things that are available in the app. And remember folks, 
that we ship to all 50 of the United States. So if you're watching us on Facebook or Instagram, I just want you, we're, I welcome you. I'm so glad you're here today. But I just wanted you to know that we do have a phone app. It is free. All you have to do is download it. And you have a lot more functions um, that you can actually embrace. And it's just a better experience. You can build a favorites list. You can watch replays of today's show or past shows. Um, and you can comment um, amongst the other people watching the show as well as you can enter to be in our giveaway. All right, friends. So um, two last things. Remember, we every week this happens, we sell out of a product and during the show. And then when you go to get it, it says, you know, out of stock, get on the wait list. You want to get on that wait list because oftentimes the team, if it's available, will be bringing stock over from our big website. Um, and so you'll just get a little ding when that actually happens. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, and if you're seeing people posting the sunflower emoji, y'all, you know, that's our logo, right? Those are people identifying themselves as TGW family. And we love it when people do that. That just kind of makes our hearts swell. So that's what that's all about. Friends, I'm once again today giving away a $25 store credit to one lucky viewer. Susie has it up. Just hit the buy button. You're not buying anything. That just puts you on the list. And that will be instantly available um, as soon as we pull the winner at the end of the show. So you could be checking out with $25 more in your pocket and not um, on what you're spending it on. So friends, I'm happy to say that my book is back in stock and I just thank you all so much for all the kind words that I'm reading and getting little messages from people. The number one thing that you can do um, for us and for me is to write a review and post it. It doesn't matter where you bought the book. You can post on Amazon, which is, you know, the biggest bookseller in the world, right? And you can post on our website and you can do both of them, even though you may not have bought it at either or one or the other. That helps me so much because that means that my book gets shown to more garden shoppers, right? So order it from us and we have signed copies. I'd love to sign a copy for you as well as the bonus resource, Flowers That Didn't Make the Book, um, will be on your email confirmation as well as, y'all, this is the bookmark that we include with um, your book. And on the back, right at the bottom, there's a QR code where you can actually scan it and get access to that document. So the book is ready and available and I have signed one for you. Then of course, my Cool Flower book, which is the step-by-step um, -step on growing cool season, hardy annuals. Um, this also I would sign as well as the Cool Flower book comes with a free video book study. Um, so you would get that also. It said that on the confirmation also, Kelly. Yep, so that's the same thing. And um, friends, this is the secret to a spring like you will never, ever have again after you start growing cool flowers. All right, and then my last book um, to talk about today is Vegetables Love Flowers, which isn't about vegetables at all, y'all. This is a three-season cutting garden book and how having that constant presence of flowers benefits a vegetable patch when you put your cutting garden right in your vegetable patch. This is really about how I succession plant as well as how I garden and farm without pesticides. Would love to, shot, to sign one for you. This also comes with a free video book study when you purchase it from us. Um, so there you go. All three together, you're ready and set to um, have a cutting garden like you have never had before. And friends, we're launching something today, which I feel fairly certain is going to sell out on this show here today, probably, is we have dug our tuberoses. And if you don't know what a tuberose is, this is what they look like. Um, they're about 36 inches tall. They have these amazing white tubular flowers that smell like gardenias. Um, and they do perennialize here for me in zone eight. Zone seven, they will also, if they have excellent drainage, otherwise people dig these every year like they commonly do dahlias. Um, so these clumps do multiply. Um, and so we dig them every three years. And this 
is what we're selling as a clump. It has multiple tube tubers in it. There's about six tubers big enough to, to bloom this year, but this was a single tuber just three years ago, y'all. So tuber roses are really are very productive. This clump, a nice size clump, is $9.95. It is all, they're only available here in the app while supplies last. They're called Mexican White Single Blooms, very fragrant, um, and get them while you can. And would you divide that when you're planting it? Yeah, that's a great question. So if I was planting this, so two, two answers to that question. If I was in a zone that could perennialize, if you're in zone eight or nine, um, I would split this probably into three because they're gonna multiply and you're gonna leave them in the ground from year to year. But if I was more Northern, I'd probably split it just in half and um, space them out. I space them about 12 inches apart, again, because they perennialize here closer if you're digging them every year. And this is not a seed, it's a product, so it would be $9.95 shipping, which is, of course, for your right. entire order. Right, so this is not a seed, this is a tuber, so it doesn't qualify for free shipping. But I will point out that you only pay $9.95 for shipping once, and you can buy as many as you want. <laughs> All right, so today we are talking about I think kind of every gardener's heartthrob. There's an occasional person I talk to that isn't um, in love with zinnias, but they are few and far between. So zinnias are a warm season annual. You grow them in full blast and sun. They will struggle in the shade and torture you with disease and pest issues and just grow super tall and not be vibrant and thriving. So they need full sun. Um, they are cut and come again. What does that mean? That means it's a branching annual, and as long as you keep cutting it deep and hard, they're going to just keep throwing up the stems. Lots of bloom for your buck, right? I mean, that's, they're just, it's amazing. Um, and I will tell you, it's a huge cash crop for us. They're in our top 10 for 25 years now. Top 10 seed we sell and top 10 flower, and we sell them to everybody, supermarkets, florists, our mixed bouquets at farmer's markets, our private market. They're just, they're just beautiful, right? Um, so you need to be sure that you cut or that you buy varieties for cut flowers. Um, and because there are short zinnias, y'all. I mean, they're, they're always trying to make bedding plants. Those are plants that stay really short so people don't have to worry about supporting them. So you need to be sure you're getting cut flowers, not the short ones. And I'm going to show you my favorite varieties in just a moment. Now, you want to buy new seed um, or you want to plant new seed every year instead of saving your own because these are primarily hybrids. That means they don't come back true to seed unless you know you go through a lot of steps. It's a lot of work to save zinnia seeds. Um, we sow them indoors into soil blocks and I'm gonna show you how to do that um, in just a little while. And the reason that we don't direct sow them, in general, most commercial growers resist direct sowing because it is way more labor the weed pressure is unbelievable, um, and then you have to thin, you waste more seeds, so we start ours inside, um, which is kind of the standard. So I wanna talk just very briefly about um, do you to pinch or not to pinch versus harvesting the center stem. So my pinching rule that I've always followed is when I pinch, I typically pinch only 50% of a crop, whether it's zinnias or any other branching annuals, right? because what that does is gives me the best of both worlds. Those that I pinch, whether it be in the tray or soon after they're planted out in the garden, that gets them to branch earlier in the growth, right? Those that I didn't pinch are gonna bloom earlier because that first central stem is going up. So it's a better of both worlds. So it's a personal preference. I will tell you that nine out of 10 times, we do not pinch zinnias because we grow such a volume of them. And when we're planting them, we are so overwhelmed with jobs to do. So typically the first cut, that central stem harvest is the pinch, right? So let me give you my super secret sauce for growing great zinnias. Um, and I learned this from an extension agent probably 15 years ago, is that I go virtually free of fertilizer or super easy. And this is why um, the mildew issue that can does develop on all zinnias 
is also fueled by fertilizer. Um, so our method of madness is that we build our soil. As you know, I mean, that's a, something that's really um, the, the main focus here on our farm. Because our farm soil drains well and is super rich in organic matter and nutrition naturally, we typically don't fertilize zinnias. Once they get planted in the garden, they are on their own um, because we just don't want to push that little button that helps to fuel mildew on them. So we plant successions of zinnias. Um, while I am still cutting on the first planting that we do mid-April, I'm still cutting it typically in October. They aren't the same great quality, but they are still pumping out the flowers. We plant zinnias about every six to eight weeks. Um, depending on where we are in production, what we are as far as our demand goes, you can plant as few as three times in a season or as many as six times. Um, and what that does is if, mill, if disease or a storm or a pest um, starts causing damage to your planting, guess what? You have two or, two or more other plantings to actually go to. So we succession plant as insurance and it just gives us incredible volume, okay? And then we also, for those successions, we plant springy kind of colors um, for that first succession, you know, pinks and um, those first ones to bloom in June. Oh, here's some pictures. Look at this one. This is the queen lime. Um, I think that's actually either the peach or the orange. Um, so this would be one of the ones that would be in our first succession, right? Green is in every succession. And the, yeah, this, is, this is the peach, actually the peach queen. Um, this would be a super good one for early on and then after, right? Um, and so you're thinking of these colors when you're making your succession. Um, so this is the bright pink, which is amazing all summer with orange and in the spring earlier with softer colors, right? And then this is, I believe that's Wine. I think that's wine. I think you're yeah. right, sister. This is a late season zinnia. We start this one on the second or third succession, so we have it for fall, right? That's just a great color. This is scarlet, and scarlet is good all seasons. And this is my favorite color, which is orange, which is for every season, y'all. <laughs> and then this is lavender. So I'm thinking of these colors when I'm, and we're gonna bring, show, talk more about those in a minute, but I'm thinking about the colors when they're actually gonna be blooming. We net our zinnias. Um, we don't always get to net all of them. And so my choice is to always net them because our zinnias are up to here on me. And all it takes is one rainstorm to lay them down. And when you um, cut them, as you should, and install netting properly. They are super easy. I just posted a reel this morning of me harvesting zinnias in netting, and you can just look and see. I'm just reaching down and cutting and pulling right out. That's because the netting's at the right level and it's tight, right? Um, so we use netting. We like to harvest. Um, can I have those pictures again? There's one in here I wanted to show. I think it's this pink one. Actually, they all are. So I just want to notice that the little yellow florets are not there. It's not as visible. Here's a perfect one. See how they're still, these petals would continue to open. And when that happens, those yellow florets come. I like the way this zinnia looks. And that is, you still have time. I mean, this is the perfect harvest stage in my book. Once the florets have um, actually popped and they're in the garden, you're cutting them, those zinnias are already on their way down for as far as stage life. Um, and remember that zinnias are in that group of flowers that I call, we call in the industry, the dirty dozen. They really pollute the water. Have you ever had vases get cloudy? That's because of all the debris that those stems dump immediately as soon as it hits the water, which fuels bacteria, which kills vase life. And we use the CVBN chlorine tablet, which we're gonna talk about that in the show also. And then lastly, Zinnias should not go into a cooler. I mean, if you happen to have a, what they call a tropical cooler, some florists do, which is much warmer, they're like 45 or above, they could go in there, but we just don't find it necessary. Zinnias thrive at room temperature, right? So, 
talking about all the Xenia stuff. Today's deal of the day in the app only again, y'all, all Xenia seeds are 20% off. Um, that's quite an opportunity to get your seeds for all the six sessions. And that's why supplies last here in the app. And it's good until Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, and remember, seed only orders ship for free. Now, we're going to look at the zinnias. Um, so this is those, um, the lavender and the pink and the orange and the red I just showed you. Those are all Benares giants. Those are the biggest, most prolific, most double zinnias and the most mildew resistant. It's the most commercially grown zinnia. It comes in all these different colors. This is the mix that Susie has up. However, in the app, all the straight colors are actually um, available also, so you can get all the different individual colors. Now, y'all, this is one of my favorite. This is the zinnia that's on my table. These are the little Oklahomas. We grow these because we love having them to use in mixed bouquets to have a variation of size, um, but I just love the small zinnias. Um, they're pretty spectacular. Um, and so this is the Oklahoma mix. Now this is that luscious queen mix. Let me tell you, this is the mix to also grow for fall. This is the perfect fall, late summer colors. Um, and so while this is a mix, all of these colors are individually available here in the app. So you can go all in on, I mean, the lemon blotch is just absolutely beautiful. And the peach, I could go on y'all, but I won't. So here is the mix. And then, so this is the giant cactus mix. And you either love them or you hate them. And let me tell you why people don't like these. So I don't know if y'all can get a good look at these. The petals are kind of frilly. Some people take one look at them and think they just look like old zinnias, like they're warm. Oh, wait, here's a big one. Oh, there you go. Look how gorgeous, look at the colors. But you can see the petal shape is very, very different. I mean, the colors, look at that pale pink. They're just beautiful, but some people think they're just old flowers, so love them or leave them, you know? It's up to you. I want that picture from now on. That was really good. Yes, so that is a mix. They are not available individually. We have looked for that. Um, the orange, there's orange Inca cactus that's also available here in the app, but the other colors are not available. So this little beauty is called Zowie. She is one of two hybrids that have come out in the last seven or eight years um, that make them, they're a hybrid obviously, more expensive, but I'm telling you friends, they're worth growing. I only plant this one midsummer to have for fall. It's like a flame. There is magenta and orange and yellow. It is just really beautiful. And it's a little bit more on the smaller size. And friends, this is one of my most favorite zinnias. This is Uproar Rose. And it is one of the most giants that I've ever grown. Um, and it is a magenta color that he does have something in his mouth. Sorry, y'all. My dog's perusing and cleaning the floor. Um, this is such a vibrant color. They're super prolific. Um, these and Zowie are both more pricey seed, but we find that it's super worth it to grow. We grow big beds of them, and we just love having those colors available. So now we're going to... I'm going to put a little water in here. Um, I'm going to do a sea starting demo. Do. And I'm going to make the small blocks, and I'm going to make um, the large blocks, and then we're going to sew them. So I'm just moistening it up a little bit. If you ever have trouble with soil blocking, meaning you can't get the, the blocks to come out easily, or they're kind of not formed quite perfectly, you know what I mean? They're kind of pulling up on the edges because it's not wet enough. And we resist putting that water in there because who's ever seen mix this wet for seed starting, right? I mean, it's it's a little bit different. So uh, this is, yeah. So I'm gonna wear my gloves today. Um, you know, the gloves not only keep my hands clean because I have to do other things, but I will tell you, especially when, 
you know, when we were making just, I know Kelly wore gloves in her days of being our seed sower. When you're making tray after tray after tray after tray, it just keeps your hands from um, getting quite sore. So this is the small blocker. This is the one that I use most of the time. Um, I use the other blockers, but this is the primary one. And this block, if you're having trouble seeing because of the comments, just swipe left or right and they'll disappear and swipe left or right and they'll come back. Okay, so this is the blocking mix. This is our ready-made mix. We also have the homemade recipe with the nutrient on our website always. And I am. this is mixed three parts soil with one part water. So basically it's about 21 cups of mix with about six or seven cups of water. Notice. I do this two-handed. Friends, I want to say that I see a lot of people online, they they do a lot of this back and forth, and that's not the proper way, but that also wears your hand out. Two hands, just push it down. It's quick and easy, and it doesn't wear your hand out at all. So, you know, we, of course, use um, flat bottom trays with no drainage holes, which means you can do it anywhere in your home or a grow room, because of course I don't have any greenhouses um, and still don't. And so this is our mini tray that holds a cluster of 20 of the three quarter inch blocks, which um, I think I should make the big blocks first, don't you think? Okay. Because I have to take my gloves off. So I'm gonna make the two inch blocks and then we're gonna sow seeds. This, by the way, is a potato masher, which I found to be the best tool for mixing the soil. Um, so the technique for the two inch blocker, it's been, again, two hands, I push it down, but I am just gobbling up the soil. So this, you know, just watching me do this, I think you can see why I only use the large blocker when I absolutely need it because of the volume of soil it takes and the space that it takes. So this is the large blocker and there you go. It makes four of the two inch blocks and in fact, another set of four would actually fit on here with it, right? So now I'm gonna sow the seeds and I think I might need a little dollop of soil to cover the gourd seeds maybe. Thank you. All right, so first up, we're gonna plant our, these are our spinning gourds. Um, you know, those precious little gourds that I love so very, very much, y'all. So you can see that the two inch blocker made a dib, dibble nipple hole in the top to receive a large seed. And I am going to just drop a seed in each one and I'm gonna to try to push it in with the toothpick, but I'm not sure how easy that'll be. So when it says it needs light, look at that y'all, look at that. I just drove that baby home. Let's see if I can do it again. Pressure's on. And that's the joy of sowing seeds immediately after you make the blocks. When they're super moist, they're really easy to do. How easy is that? I won't need that, sister. So when a seed packet says needs light to germinate. That means you sow the seed on the surface, seed it firmly, but it's still getting oxygen and light. When it says it needs darkness, you do what I just did. You push it home. Now, that's in the large tray. This is, I mean, the large blocker. So the small blocker is where we actually sow zinnia seeds. And we're using purposely some of the coated, that's a clay coating um, that is put on there to make it easy for them to run it through counting machines, right? Um, so that's a zinnia seed. And we thought it'd be easier for y'all to see. And that is planting a zinnia seed. I just put the pointy end down. I would do this with zinnias, cosmos, and marigolds. And they grow in this small block until they um, go to the garden. I start zinnias about three weeks ahead of when I wanna plant my first planting. We typically try to get our first zinnias in the ground the week of April 15th, which is the, our last expected frost date, and we cover them just to keep them from getting wind whipped and too chilly at night, you know? Um, just trying to get, we don't do a ton, 
but we get some in the ground so we can start getting flowers earlier. So that's how you sow um, zinnias, and that would be the very, so you can see the tail is still sticking out, but the lion's share of the seed is pushed down into the block, and that creates the darkness. So that's the way we do marigolds, cosmos, and zinnias, and that is how I soil block. All right, so. Coming up. Yep, we're coming, our, yeah, fine. All right, so now let's take a look at some of your options um, for actually getting soil blocking equipment. So our most popular product by far and customer favorite by virtue of that, right, is our soil block maker kit. That has everything in it that you need to soil block, right? So it comes with the small um, three quarter inch blocker, it comes with a five pound bag, or five, is it five quart or five pounds? Quart. Six quarts. No. Six, we, we, <laughs> six quart bag of Vermont Compost Fort V, which is ready-made mix. You don't add anything to it but the water when you're actually doing it. However, we recommend sifting it. All seed starting mix needs to be sifted before you actually make the seeds. It also comes with five of those large um, reusable foam trays, which will hold either three sets of 20 of the small blocks or eight or even 12, if you maneuver them a little bit, of the two inch blocks. It also includes the seed pan, which we use this because there's no static electricity, y'all. If you've ever used a little plastic butter dish or something to dump your seeds in and you're chasing the seed all over the container, it just won't get on whatever you're using, that's static electricity. No static electricity, and when you use our little toothpick, which comes with a toothpick holder with toothpicks in it, um, then you actually um, are set up to sow seeds quickly, efficiently, and easily. It also includes little wooden plant markers and three packs of seeds, but I just had to show you. And this is an excellent Easter gift to yourself, y'all. See that little Easter, that little carrot right there? So the three free packs of seeds are your choice of either three warm packs or three cool packs. And y'all, that's not all. Then the kit also includes seed starting made easy, my course, which is about an over an hour and some odd minutes long, lots of little sessions, sunflower sowing, soil blocking, and direct sowing. Um, so that's the seed starting made easy. That kit is $89.95 and you are ready to soil block. Now, if you don't need the kit, maybe you just want the tools, that's when why we have, once again, we have a carrot hiding in here, y'all. Um, we have the soil block set available. These babies just landed here from England yesterday. Well, it landed last week. Got to us yesterday. So we now have the two inch blockers back in stock. So you can get the two inch, the three quarter inch small, as well as the inserts. Um, all, both of these are $87.95. Comes with written instructions. The recipe's on our website always. Um, and this will have you ready to soil block and do your large seeds and your small seeds. All right, so, whoop. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. We had a product grab the camera. <laughs> All right, or you can buy the and stuff individually. This is the small blocker, which is $39.95, and it makes 20 of those three quarter inch um, blocks. But friends, I'm telling you, if you want the small blocker, you should get the kit. The value is unbelievable. And then you have everything that you actually need. So that is the small blocker. Now you can also get the two inch blocker by itself. It is $46.95 and it comes um, with the nipples, the white nipples. Um, then you can purchase the black insert separately. Um, so this is $46.95. And then if you just need the insert, we now have those again too, friends. They're $9.95, and this just makes it possible to bump up when and if you actually need to. So how I mentioned a minute ago that all seed starting um, soil should be sifted, and that's why we have the soil set, y'all. How about this? Is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen? We are just all about Easter here today. Um, so those are the cutest things ever. So this is the soil set. This comes with this sifter. 
It comes with the fungus gnat fighting kit, the sticky traps, the mosquito bits that you add to your watering can once a week to prevent those lar that larva. It has a seed pan. It has the nutrient mix, which makes six recipes, which is about, you add your compost and peat moss to make about 3,000 of the small blocks. And it has our toothpick dispenser and toothpicks, all for $58.80, and again, Pay product shipping once, $9.95, and get as many different products as you want. Um, so this has everything you need to get your soil in shape and take care of it um, once you start soil blocking. Now, we sell three different sizes of the reusable foam trays. Y'all, these are not meant to be thrown away. Yes, they're the same thing that your hamburger comes on, um, and you can wash those up. We have these in different sizes to accommodate the different size blockers. This is the small, which is $2.95 for five of them. It comes in five packs and 25 packs. Um, and then it had, the mini is $1.95, the small is $2.95, and the large is $3.95, and you get five of each one. Then they also come in 25 packs, $6.95, $12.95, and $15.95. And friends, we use them for years and years. Um, and so we put tape on them and just label them over and over and over again, right? Um, so you can have all the different sizes that you need. Now, one of the key pieces that I've learned in seed starting after all these you know, two and a half decades, or actually almost three decades of seed starting, is a seedling heat mat. Heat, this heats the soil up to 75 to 85 degrees based on your air temperature. This little lump right here is a built-in thermostat that works off the surrounding air temperature. This makes your seeds germinate quicker and more uniformly. Um, and so the seed, the small heat mat is $39.95. We have a grower size over on our big website. If you need that, you can visit over there to check it out. Um, and then another piece of this pie that we find that really helps. This is wide weave burlap. You can see how see-through it is. This traps moisture, but still allows air to circulate and go through it. So it comes in a 36 by 36 inch piece. I just lay this on top of my soil blocks as soon as we sew them. Um, and as first signs of germination, we remove this. Um, this just really helps to retain moisture um, on the surface sown seed. So it comes in this little 36 inch um, bundle and you can get a one pack for $3.95 or a three pack for $9.95. All right, so how do we grow those babies up so beautifully? Another one, so this is the Neptune seaweed fish. Um, and again, I just kind of skip over my Xenia seedlings occasionally. Occasionally I'll give them a little hit, um, but I water everybody else once a week with the house plant directions. Um, it's a little stinky. You don't want to spray this stuff, um, but it really makes an incredible difference. $15.95, you use one tablespoon to a gallon, you shake it really well um, before you actually use it. So here is that fungus gnat fighting kit um, that I had in the soil set. This is the mosquito bits that you add to your watering can once a week to take out the larvae that are living in the moist soil that hatch into those adults. And then the yellow sticky traps actually um, capture those adults. So by using both of these from the get-go, you never have that outbreak, right? And you never have to fight that war. So I'm going to turn it over to Susie Q to talk about <laughs> super cute. She's going to talk about something really cute. We're going to talk about uh, watering peekaboo. Here is our espresso watering can. We have a little bunny rabbit that's a hitchhike. That is not what I would normally put in here. Water, it holds, what, two cups of water? It holds two cups of water, and we use this because it has a nice gentle pour for our seedlings. So if this were my seedling tray, I would pour gently in the corner of the tray and let the water absorb from the bottom. Um, and this is beautiful to put flowers in, to have sitting on your uh, shelf in between your watering. And this one is $29.95. And um, we also have another one that we've had for years. And this is what Lisa actually uses in her seed room. And this is the longer spout, equally as beautiful, stainless steel watering can. It holds four cups. 
and it's $21.95 and beautiful gift to give anyone or to get it for yourself to use um, in your watering of your babies. Next up, I said I wasn't going to mess up my hair, but here we go. <laughs> This is the pith helmet. This is the same hat that Lisa and I wear in the garden. And Love you it. may you may have seen this on mailman or mail delivery person. And you haven't, haven't seen many as lately, but the old guys knew what they were doing. It has a headband that lifts the hat away from your head so air can flow. So it just keeps you so much cooler when it's hot outside. Now, granted, this does not come with the bunny ears. I know that's disappointing for some of you, but um, we love it in the garden. I've also fallen off a ladder with this on, and it dented the helmet, but not my head. So it's very hard and protective. Rain runs right off of it. So um, if you're accident prone like I am, you be sure to get one of these. It's $39.95, and um, we love it. We use ours all the time. Next up we have our favorite gloves. These are our nitrile touch gloves. And these are like a second skin. This fits like a glove, haha, <laughs> like a second skin. But it has a grippy on the palms. It, this is a nitrile, not latex, and it's breathable. I have a large hand for a woman. This is a medium, so they're kind of unisex. But they do come from size extra small all the way up to large and um, they're assorted colors one pack is $7.95 a four pack is $24.95 and we wear them and forget we have them on so be sure to protect your hands keep that dirt from underneath your fingernails and um, and you won't be sorry keep some on hand in case your dog steals one we don't usually get go through the end with our fingernails so they just last a long time. Wash them with your blue jeans and hang them up to dry or I throw mine, um, I wash mine on my hands when I'm done working. They also come in a Tough model. The Tough model, see how sticky they are, the Tough model has a double layer of the nitrile on the glove palm and it's good for heavy duty work moving. Wood, concrete, anything um, that you might want an extra grip we have mechanics that use these, golfers have used these because they are so grippy. And these come in size small up to extra large and um, you're gonna love it for your man. So be sure to get a pair for you and your man. Again, $7.95 for one, or you can get a four pack for $24.95. Um, won't disappoint, keep some on hand. I'm sorry, I'm very hot. I'm gonna have to take off my jacket. I've tried to be Eastery colored. All right, so next up we have our gauntlet gloves and our gauntlet gloves were once called rose gloves they're all man-made material so you can put these in the washing machine so you can use them to tangle any nasty thing out in your garden like um, brambles poison ivy any of those and you just throw them in the washing machine and wash it off they come in size small to extra large. They're $37.95, and everybody needs to have some of these to protect their hands. We've even used them to, to help rescue birds, um, hawks, and things that are can be a little nasty. These are good for handling them, too. Next up, we have our sod harvest knife bundle. Now, this is our Japanese sod harvest knives. These things are so sharp. Y'all remember Ginsu knives that had the little serrated edge that one doesn't want to come out of his cover there we go you can see the serrated edge they're great for cutting anything down in your soil weeds to separate perennials um, any of those kinds of things lisa uses it to get twine wrapped around the tractor and um, they're just great this gives you a little more leverage if you're using it to cut something really heavy duty we also use it to cut greens to harvest any lettuces or anything else you can easy cut those greens um, in no time it's $17.95 and that's the bundle keep one give one to a friend keep them both they're great next up we have the dibber first up is the big dibber not the big dipper but the big dibber this comes with inch marks on it so you can use this to plant small bulbs and it's also great to plant soil blocks when planting soil blocks we try to make the smallest hole possible in our Bio360 um, that we use to plant through. 
to help prevent weeds because wherever you let soil see sunlight, you're gonna get weeds. So make as small a hole as possible. This dibber is $14.95. If you're planting small soil blocks, we have a smaller dibber. The mini dibber is $7.95, makes a smaller hole. Again, you wanna make the hole as small as you can uh, when you're planting your transplants or for little teeny bulbs. Next up, we have our shear and pouch kit. We had ours around here somewhere. Here they are in their new form. And these are our favorites. We use these on the farm. This is Lisa's old pouch. The, this thing is over 20 years old. You can see how well-worn it used to look like this when it started. And the great thing about this is it has a clip. So you can just clip it on your pocket. You don't have to wear a belt because it can get really hot in the summer and a belt is really hot. So this clips on your pocket. These are our favorite shears. They're springed in the middle. You can see it's got an L on it. That's Lisa's but it's very easy on your hand. We used to use bigger Felcos, but they just got to be heavy and hard to do as our hands got older. And this will cut a big sunflower, a small woody. We use it to harvest everything. And we always put it back on our pocket pouch when we're done with it, so you never lose it. So the pouch and shear kit is $60.90. When we have um, events on the farm for our crew, we often have giveaways. And we have these on the table. They always get chosen first, even by the people that work here. Everybody needs these if you have a yard. Great gift. All right, next up we have our CBN tabs. And this is the tablet we put in every bucket that gets taken out to the farm to harvest. Um, there are very few things that we don't put this in. Uh, basil, sometimes we don't put this in basil or hydrangeas, but everything else, we put a CVBN tab in. It's a chlorine tablet, and what it does is it just makes sure that there's no bacteria in the water, so when you cut your flower and you put your flower in the water, it's getting a drink of good sterile water um, the first time, and it's gonna get up all the, all the way up to the stem to help um, the flower. Now. Lisa was talking earlier about the Dirty Dozen, the flowers that pollute their own water, zinnias being one of those. This is what you put in the water. You, it's good for up to 72 hours, but we like for the flowers to stay at least four hours in this treatment, and then they can be moved to holding solution or flower food. So the CVN tabs is an 80 count bottle. One bottle is $18.95, two bottles special is $29.95. Um, so keep that on hand if you're harvesting your own flowers. It really does make a big difference. Next up we have Slug X. Now I've just moved and I don't have many flowers planted in my new place, but I still have slugs climbing up the side of my house leaving trails, it's just awful. But anyway, this is the slug trap. You take the top off. Oh, look, surprise, <laughs> we have a carrot. You take the, the top off and you fill this with beer. Paps Blue Ribbon is their preferred. It just has a lot of yeast in it and they smell it, I guess, and come for it more. They drink the beer, fall in and drown. And then because we have animals, golden retrievers, raccoons, other animals, it has a top and you can put a brick or a cinder block on top of this to keep the animals from getting in and having pickled snails or slugs. So this is $19.95 and um, put a couple of these around wherever you're having snail problems and your problems will be lessened. Next up we have our tick key. This is one of my favorites. I find these all over the house because I never know where they are. So I always have to bring more home. So I bring one or two home. And so now I have them in every drawer in the house. But this tick key is great. It has a little, has a little instructions on the back. You slip it over the neck, the head of the tick on your wiggling dog, child, or husband, and you just pull it and it just rips its head right out of the um, right out of your skin. And the reason it's called a key is because it has a hole, so you can put it on your keychain. I have one there too. So be sure to get a tick key for everybody because you know the tick season is right around the corner. It's $9.95, they come in assorted colors, and um, you don't want to be without it if you have a tick. Next up we have our compost bucket. So this is our compost bucket, has a great handle. It has no filter on top, do you know why? Because things that are supposed to go in here don't have a smell. You only wanna put your scraps from your vegetables, no meat, no, we don't even put um, 
really banana peels in here because they just take so long to break down. Anything you put in here, it's really not going to generate much of a smell and you just want to take it out and empty it regularly. So the kitchen compost bucket is perfect for under your kitchen sink and it's $15.95 and um, we just love it and have a thousand uses for that little thing. Next up, we have our weather stick. Anyone that has a man or an elderly person or someone that's retired and is at home a lot, this will be a favorite. I love mine and I'm not there much. This weather stick is made of balsam wood, which is the same thing as a divining rod. And what happens is you simply put a little nail into the wood you want to attach this to. And you want to put this where you can see it from the side. When the weather is fair, it turns up. When the weather is foul, I've seen it touch the post that it's attached to. It's the most incredible thing ever. It is so much fun to watch. Great gift. Get one for yourself. It's only $10.95. Um, we love our weather sticks. They are so much fun. All right, so the, here's the reminder. Last chance to get on the list for the giveaway of the $25 in-store app credit. And you do need to be present to win. And at the end, we'll call. And if your name's called and you respond, then Kelly will put it directly into your cart so you can shop. All right, next up is my sister. Hey, friends, I just want to show you. Do you see this cute little bunny <laughs> and these Easter eggs and the little bunnies? Susie just always is... She is like the crafty one here, that's for sure. And let's so, make it clear. I'm Suzanne, and we have a Susie, too. Yeah. And Susie is the one that does the set. That's she right. does a great job. Yeah, she's our fourth sister. All right. So, friends, let's talk a little bit about, we're gonna, I'm going to show you what's blooming in the garden, but I always want to start off by saying, if you store seeds properly, your seeds will last a really long time. We commonly get asked, if I buy them today, will they be good this summer? You know what I mean? So these are desiccant packets. They absorb moisture. We keep them with our seeds. They absorb any moisture from the humidity. Um, you can get a two pack for $2.95 or a 10 pack for $9.95. And we actually have a really short blog over on our website called Storing Seeds Longer that just give you the step-by-step -step for best case scenario. So you buy seeds, when you see them. When you fall for something, you want to get it then and file it for the proper time to actually start. So I don't know if you knew it or not, but we grow the same seeds here. We use the same seeds here on the farm that you're purchasing. We take our seed package right off the same shelf. We no longer hold large masses of bulk typically here on the farm. So that's changed a little bit, but I love knowing that I'm starting the same seeds that you guys are starting at home. And y'all, look at this. Is this not the sweetest little thing you have ever seen? These are bunny tails. And I just can't stop touching them. Now, these are super short because it's so early in the season, but let me give you what the tidbit is about this. Bunny tails is a cool flower, y'all. Most of us, as I was, was planting it in spring like it was a warm season annual, and that's why it's so super short. I am hoping these were fall planted and wintered over here in my 8A garden, and they are blooming pretty short this year now, but as the season, I've cut them, cut some, and I'm expecting regrowth, and we're hoping to get a taller one. And if you haven't touched a bunny tail, oh my gosh, y'all, these are so amazing. So I'm saying they're winter hardy to zone eight, probably seven, but y'all have to test that. And then we are harvesting Sorrenthe. So this is um, trying to get a nice little group of flowers here so you can actually see. This is Sorrenthe. Look how tall these are, by the way. They're pretty amazing, but look at this gorgeous purple color. So this was fall planted, um, is winter hardy, I think to almost zone five. You'll have to check the book. Um, but this is a great early bloomer. We really love this, and this will be all over my Easter table. Now, Lane and I just um, did a Seed Talk podcast. If you haven't got, checked out our podcast on any a podcast, your favorite one, mm -hmm. Seed Talk, we talked about how Dianthus um, is super fun to use before it even blooms. This is a great filler, y'all. If you're desperate and you have enough dianthus, you can cut it to use it in this bud, pre-bud stage 
to be filler in your bouquets if you actually need that. So this is sweet, sweet William before it blooms. And then white is always the first to bloom. And that's what this is. I mean, who does not need more white flowers this time of the year, right? So this is sweet. That is the variety of sweet William. Comes in 12 different colors, I think. And it's the earliest one to bloom on my farm. Y'all look, more short flowers. Oftentimes, don't be alarmed, the very first blooms, when you go through a crazy winter like we have, hot, cold, hot, cold, the plants don't, they're a little confused. So they'll start blooming really short. Just cut them like you would any normal. You don't have to bring them in, but you need to cut those stems off deep and hard, and that'll stimulate more growth, and they'll get plenty tall later. This is Ivory Princess. It's buttercream, y'all. How gorgeous is that little color? So that is Calendula, better known as Pot Marigold, in the Ivory Princess. And I've cut this because I'm going to use it on my table. Um, this is Sweet Pea Vine, y'all. This is a great filler. Think about having those trendles and things in your little bouquet. Um, you can actually lay this out on the table, you know, stick it in. Um, make a little arrangement and you can drape this along your table. Um, so that is Sweet Pea Vine. Royal Mix is the mixed color, um, which I really love, but I'll tell you my favorite Sweet Pea is the High Scent. It is the most vigorous, most fragrant, and the biggest blooms um, of the ones that I have actually um, grown. So friends, time to wrap it up, which means don't forget to stick around for the Q&A at the end, right? Um, so if you're not familiar and you're new here, and we just welcome all the new folks, uh, we have a big website that is full of free resources. Um, we have videos, blogs, podcasts, and be sure to check out both of our podcasts. Um, Field and Garden is my original podcast, um, as well as we have Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. And the episode of Seed Talk that launched yesterday was Snapdragon Bloom Order and Group Considerations. That just means if you need to know more about Snapdragons, you need to visit and listen to that podcast. All right, so, hey friends, I am hosting the Ask a Flower Farmer this week. Um, haven't been around there for a couple of weeks, and join me over there at the Gardener's Workshop on Instagram, 1230 on Wednesdays, Eastern Time, and I spend about 30 minutes um, answering as many questions as I can for you. And remember to meet us back here next week um, on Friday um, for a great special. We always have great specials, right? Um, so now, guess what, friends? It's time to name a winner, and I hope you're here, because that'd be a happy Easter, wouldn't it? Happier Easter. So our winner is Paula Babcock. Cock. Paula, if you're here, give us a big old shout out in the comments, and Kelly will dump $25 credit right into your um, cart, so when you go to check out, you are $25 ahead. Congratulations. Um, thank you so much, y'all, for doing, I mean, we love giving stuff away, and we have such great participation in this, um, so hopefully, Paula, you are here. So friends, while we're waiting for Paula to give us a holler, let's look at some of these questions. Um, I can take a couple here. She's here. Oh, Paula's here. Congratulations, Paula. Um, I hope that you have happy shopping with 25 more dollars. Um, so thanks for so much for um, participating and being here with us today. All right, Zone 8, Texas. Is this the right time to direct seed rooster pepper seeds? What a good question. So we do not direct seed any peppers outdoors. Um, peppers, just like tomatoes, um, you have a much higher rate of success and efficiency by sowing them indoors. We start them indoors um, in the small block. And yes, we are starting, I'm an eight too also, by the way. Um, and we are starting those now um, to grow them up in the small block. And then we normally bump those up to the two inch blocker just to get them a little bit bigger before they go to the garden. Tomatoes, peppers, eucalyptus, and eggplant are typically the only ones I can think of that we actually bump like that, but peppers do really, really well. Um, so our rooster peppers, y'all have to check out. They're here in the um, app if you don't know about them. They're the most amazing ornamental um, pepper for bouquets. 
they're hot if you want to eat them, but they're hybridized for bouquets. You said you don't fertilize for zinnias, but do you prep the bed with fertilizer as well? Could you use compost tea on zinnias? So what a great question. So our beds, all of our, I never really know what beds something is going into. I plan blocks of beds, um, and then we just do plan them as we need to in order. Um, so yes, they get dry organic fertilizer, but we do really light doses of fertilizer when we use it because our soil has been just fed for so long with tons of leaf mold and organic um, compost tea and those, I mean, compost. Um, so we do add dry organic fertilizer, um, but typically no liquid fertilizer like, um, and you ask about compost tea on zinnias. So if it's truly cooked compost made into true tea, meaning it's brewed properly, I would think that that would perhaps give those zinnias some fighting power against diseases, right? But I would do a light application. Um, and again, it's all about the quality of the compost and the quality of the compost tea. Um, but because compost tea doesn't really smell, um, so it's not a problem with using that. So that works. We love making compost tea. We just never have time to do all that anymore. Um, but yeah, compost tea is like super power. That's like a bionic plant, in my opinion. How long do you keep seedlings on the heat mat before taking them off? Another great question. So we sow our seeds and put it on the seedling heat mat. And when you see approximately 50% of the blocks showing signs of life and cracking. And when I say cracking, that means if you can see that little tiny seed and you see that little neck cracking out, that's cracking, that's being born. So when I see about 50% of them doing that, um, I'll move them to the off of the heat to the grow light. Now, if you have some scragglers, and I have two trays right now that are doing it, and I have no explanation why this happens. If they, you have like 30% that germinate and are looking good and they're starting to grow up and the rest of them are just not germinating, I move them over to the lights because I don't want the ones that have germinated to stretch. I typically, um, if you are like me and have a grow room that I can really manipulate the heat level by the door as well as the, the level of the shelf, high level, the top shelves get much hotter just because heat rises than the bottom shelf. I would put those that still haven't germinated quite as much as I wanted on the very top shelves under the grow light because that way they continue to get some warmth, additional warmth to push them along, but you don't lose um, those that have already sprouted. Do we, oh, she's typing it up here as I'm getting ready to answer it. What are the dimensions of the mini blocking tray? We didn't know that before. It's five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. And when you put the um, small blocks on it, I didn't necessarily think of this when I was doing it, but, and I'm gonna move them with my fingers to show y'all what I, I always try to put the blocks to one side or the other instead of the center. That gives me a larger well to water into right, without, and I pour the water up against the side of the, um, oh, I'm having to lean across my darn dog that's laying at my feet. I pour like this so that the water is spilling up against the edge of the tray, not up against the edge of the blocks. Um, so hopefully that helps you. So friends, we are gonna have to wrap it up there. And I hope everybody has a, Happy Easter weekend with your family and friends. Um, and we're just looking for great weather here. So friends, until we meet again, and again, congratulations to our winner. So glad you were here today. All right, folks, see you on the flip side of this week, next week.